Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of 7 Minute AE Tutorials where you learn tips, tricks, and shortcuts in 7 minutes or less. No BS, just AE. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create this fun little animation. There's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. Okay, so I'm in After Effects 2019, so let's just click this new composition button here. And let's just call this Loop Out Expression Animation. And 1920 by 1080, 2997, and 20 seconds will work just fine. First thing we need to do is to create a color control. So let's go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll call that color control. With color control highlighted, let's go up to effect, expression controls, and choose a color control. We'll keep this simple. We'll just call this color one, highlight that, and duplicate three times. So we have four colors. And you can just pick any colors you'd like. These can be adjusted later on. So it's not really that big of a deal if these are perfect right off the bat. Okay, so let's create our first shape layer. You can just right click in this area next to your timeline, go new shape layer. I'm gonna bring it underneath our color control and we're gonna call this first layer ball. Let's go to our add button and add in a group and we'll call this circle. Within the circle, we're gonna add in an ellipse and also a stroke. Let's increase that ellipse path size up to 800 by 800 pixels and increase our stroke to about 15 pixels. Added frame paths in. We're going to animate both our start and end percentage. So let's put keyframes at the beginning of our animation here. We're going to make start zero and end 0.1. Okay, now let's go forward to our one second mark here and now make start 49.9 and make end 50. So our start is just a tenth of a percent behind our end at all times. Adjust our offset to 90 degrees. Highlight all of these keyframes. And we need to make these easy ease. And let's go down one, two, three, four frames and bring our start keyframes over so that way it's offset. Okay, and now let's highlight these first two keyframes, open up our graph editor and pull these keyframes over as far as you can. Same thing for our end keyframes, grab those two and pull those all the way in. Okay, we're gonna loop this at about two seconds. Alt click on start. As you start to type, you'll see options that you have. If you go to loop out and then you put the first parenthesis in and then you put a quotation marks, you'll see you have continue cycle offset and ping pong. So ping pong is what we're gonna be focusing on. So let's click on that and hit enter. And then to copy this, just right click on start and copy expression only, highlight end and control V. And now both of these have that expression on them. Hit control R to bring up our ruler and then also hit our quotation marks to bring up our safe guides. So I'm just putting these rulers right on this cross in the middle of our composition here. Highlight contents and add another group and we'll call this string. And then within string, we're going to add a path. Let's put a vertex here and then a vertex over here. First vertex in the middle of our comp, the other one somewhere in the middle of this animation right here. Okay, so now we need to add in a stroke. So let's add a stroke and we're gonna make that stroke 15 pixels and we'll leave that white for right now. Go into our string group here. If we go to our transform properties of string, let's go down to our rotation and put a keyframe at the beginning of our animation and leave it at zero. Go to one second and let's make that 180. And again, we're gonna make these easy ease. So right click easy ease or F9. Open up our graph editor and we're gonna pull these handles the same way we did for our other group all the way in and notice how the uh, string doesn't come back. And the reason why is because we need that loop out expression. We copied it off the start. So we still have that copied. All we have to do is highlight rotation and control V. And I'm getting some weird movement on this. So I'm just gonna reset these keyframes. If you highlight them all and hit control and click, they all go back to linear. So I'm gonna do that and now make them Bezier all over again. I could have messed up whenever I went into the graph editor. Sometimes you accidentally go above or below this line and that can mess things up. Okay, so let's go back into our circle group here and let's go to our add button. We're gonna add in an offset paths. Whenever you have a stroke, as you increase your offset paths, it just makes it into a shape. See how this makes it more of a rectangle. We wanna change our miter join to round join. And then we also wanna add a fill into this to fill in this transparent area here. And now that we have some colors in here, let's go ahead and start to assign these to our color control. 
highlight color control and you want to lock down this effects control panel. So that way we can click away and see it still stays up there. So far we have a stroke and let's pick whip that to color one. And we also have a fill. So let's open up that fill and let's pick whip that fill to color two. So see now whatever we change this to, it will change here automatically. And we also have a string. So we have that stroke and maybe let's pick whip color three. Let's highlight circle, duplicate that, bring it underneath string. It's going to rename this trail one and open up trail one. And we want to get rid of our fill. We don't need that anymore. And we also don't need our offset paths. So all we need is just this stroke. If we open up our stroke. Let's change our butt cap to round cap and our line join to round join. So let's go ahead and add in a dash. Now, one of the things you may not know about is you can also add in gaps and that's the space in between the dashes. And with 2019, you can actually add in three dashes and three gaps. We only need one dash and one gap for right now, but just so you know, those options are available. Make this ellipse path for our trail smaller. Dash 60 and our gap 70. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna add in another dash and gap. Now these are all interacting together. So you can get some pretty cool little designs using multiple dashes and gaps. Let's highlight trail one, duplicate. Now we have trail two. I'm just gonna pull that underneath trail one. And if we hit U on our keyboard to bring up our keyframes, I'm just gonna grab these bottom set of start and end keyframes. And let's go forward one, two. Trail two ellipse path, let's make this maybe 500. And now see, this is the effect that we have. And actually we can make that even smaller. And then I also want to decrease the stroke width. So maybe make this eight. And then actually let's go ahead and duplicate that one more time. So now we have trail three. I'm gonna pull that underneath, open up our ellipse path and let's make this 250. Make our stroke, let's say four, hit U on our keyboard. And we wanna go for two more frames. So one, two, page down. I hope this helped you out. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. I've included the project file in the description below, and I'd love to hear your feedback about this course and any other topic you'd like to see covered. Don't forget to be on the lookout for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers, coming very soon. I'll give you more information about this course in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.